Hello. So we're out of the wind today, and I'm hoping that we're not going to get too many disturbances because I am in a public place, but it is the weekend, and we'll just keep our fingers crossed. Uh, so I had success with a couple of other videos I just recorded, so we should be good. Okay, so today I'm having you read Aesthetics as Metaphysical Meaning Making in the Face of Death by a Finnish philosopher who's living today, Maja Butters. Uh, so Maja Butters is a philosopher, and she's also a cultural anthropologist and an ethnographer at uh, Helsinki University. And I think she's also a graduate student there as well. And so, she, so what is ethnography really? We should at least be clear on that. So. That has to do with studying uh, culture from a qualitative and experiential point of view, by the way, okay? So that's part of how it is that she's working with uh, dying patients in uh, Finland. So the research, so she's looking into research in death and dying in Finland, uh, namely having to do with a, a so-called post-Christian outlook. She's also a phenomenologist, She's interested in metaphysics and likewise aesthetics. So in other words, uh, aesthetics and metaphysics have to do with meaning making of imagery and artistic expression, okay? And then so as a contemporary superseding of the role of religious practice I have written down here in keying in with her aesthetics. So in other words, she's seeing aesthetics as supplanting uh, tradi the traditional role that uh, religion has helped people to contend with the problems of mortality and death. Okay, so then is she, she's, she's looking at something we might call in uh, everyday language something like secular spirituality or even uh, secular metaphysics. Okay. So Butters gets her, is, is doing this work by way of working with hospice patients as well. So her prologue has the story of Heidi, who uh, is a, a, a patient, a hospice patient who is dying of colon cancer, whereby uh, she has this story of this blackbird that she had noticed in her yard that was being eaten by a hawk and she was seeing herself as, Heidi was seeing herself as this blackbird, and that uh, vision or that uh, incident happening uh, in her yard helped her to get to a moment of uh, consolation. In other words, it was a way in which she was having an aesthetic experience that helped her come to, that was helping her come to terms with her uh, experience of mortality and the inevitability of um, mortality in the face of uh, her, her cancer uh, diagnosis, et cetera, right? So uh, Butters also brings the uh, example of the Philosopher, the Scottish philosopher Ronald Hepburn, whereby we're thinking of the importance of aesthetics, whereby aesthetic scenes are thought of as revealing something fundamental about how things are. And so when we're thinking of aesthetics here, we're looking at something that is uh, perceptually uh, meaningful. In other words, when we're thinking of perception, we're thinking of the importance of the five senses, and even more importantly, the way in which those, uh, those five senses help bring about experience of the world by way of um, this e aesthetic experience, right? So in other words, um, this, we're, we're not thinking of uh, fundamental reality in and of itself as we're thinking of this point on uh, Hepburn we're thinking of something that is other, so something that is metaphysical and beyond words, right? 
So, and beyond words and beyond clear concepts as well. So in other words, this experience that Heidi had with the blackbird eaten by the hawk is something that is expressing something that is beyond words and then also beyond life itself as well. And that experience or that she witnessed, that, that event that, that Heidi witnessed is emblematic of this uh, sensory involvement with her environment as a way, as something that becomes aesthetic to take her beyond what that experience is in and of itself, okay? So, in other words, um, this way of thinking aesthetically is to see things as known and um, referred to as metaphysical meaning making for uh, butters, right? So, metaphysics has an inquiry, me metaphysics is known as an inquiry into the ultimate nature of things. So when we study metaphysics and philosophy, we see it as an inquiry into the ultimate reality of things. So when Heidi is drawing on this image, she's looking at how it's correlating with her ultimate reality as it's then uh, experienced for her uh, because uh, she's dying and also as a way for her to have some consolation with her uh, mortality as well. And so this could take us to issues having to do with the limits of being and questions about non-being, and these are metaphysical questions, right? Brought on by the advent of mortality and death. So aesthetics of meaning-making incorporates metaphysics in a religious way and more specifically for butters in a metaphysical way, okay? So in a, a secular way as well. So terminal illness changes our metaphysical outlook into the ultimate reality uh, of our lives and the end of our lives. So apart from our economic, professional, healthy perspectives, okay? So end of life uh, changes bring about terminal questions and or challenges perhaps not previously encountered. And so this, this also gets us to start thinking about pragmatic and philosophical changes in the way that we understand things. So the meaning of aesthetics isn't necessarily about just beauty and the way we understand beauty, but as Butters uh, writes, it's uh, rather the concept, uh, rather the concept can mean anything that people find meaningful in a sensual way. So aesthetics can be anything that people find meaningful in a sensual way, as Butters has it, right? So Butters' um, main argument has to do with the, the deep impressions and engagement with art, quote, are aesthetic experiences that help people to handle the complex and ambiguous existential issues as meaning-making within a challenging existential situation. So the challenging existential situation is end-of-life questions, etc. So in other words, there's the idea of experience as tied in with existential issues and likewise end-of-life existential issues as well. And so phenomenology is a means by accessing our being and our not being. Um, and so this goes beyond just religious tradition into something more secular. So again, she's looking at this from a post-Christian cultural perspective whereby people are not all Christian as much as they were in the past. So we're seeing a transition from a way of dealing with these existential issues that uh, religion had us in, whereas with uh, uh, philosophy and metaphysics, we're getting to something that looks more secular and something that is metaphysical, obviously, right? So she cites also the uh, philosopher uh, Thomas Sordas, 
whereby seeing language as itself as a limitation of experience, and indeed phenomenology as the aim to go beyond something more primary about being and not being. So in other words, just talking about it is not capturing the full experience that we have with these aesthetic experiences as well. So in other words, uh, language is just one part of how it is that we experience uh, things in the world, right? So we need to think of the, the phenomenological perspective as an embodied experience because the way in which we understand things is as, out, at, is as uh, placing ourselves uh, and our bodies in the context of uh, experiences in life, right? And so when we're thinking about those experiences in life, also our physical state, our physical well-being, our health, or the uh, problems that we're having for our health, having with our health, also uh, affect the way in which we understand the world is really um, the big point here, right? So, in other words, um, experience is not constituted by language, but discloses experience in a pheno phenomenological sense. So, the embodiment of the way we're looking at phenomenology is understood in a relational way. So, the existential ground of culture and the self is relational. So, in other words, it's not just one or the other but it's how the two are working together by way of the body, experience, myself, in relation to uh, the larger community, et cetera, right? So according to Sordas, uh, uh, we have this idea that of John Dewey who differentiated experience from an experience. So in other words, we have this generalized sense of experience, but then we also have this practical sense of experience. John Dewey is a 20th century uh, philosopher who's known as a pragmatist. So he will emphasize the pragmatic features of how we're working with an experience in and of itself as, quote, the result of an interaction between a live creature and some aspect of the world in which he lives, right? So in other words, living in the world and experiences are born out of our interaction and practical application in the world as we're understanding it experientially, right? And so for Dewey, the focus is on aesthetic experience and a qualitative experience as well, as opposed to uh, uh, a qu only quantification of thinking. So, in other words, we're looking at ideas of something that is felt in our experience, something that is valued, something that is uh, valuable for the experience itself as it's understood perceptually and also by way of our bodies, right? So, art is also understood in terms of quality of doing and a quality of what has been done as well. So, in other words, Art is not just something for Dewey whereby you just go look at it in a museum. It's also an experience as well. And it's an experience of making as well. So his emphasis was also on the experience of making art. So he had a book in, published in the 1930s titled Art as Experience. Uh, so, so then when we move to uh, Butter's subchapter, uh, Embodied Perception and Disrupted Intentionality, we uh, look at the uh, patient named Marty, who is 60 year old, uh, a 60-year-old patient who was dying of lymphoma. And uh, hearing this music of Tavener's uh, eternal memory as offering a sense of safety, so, in other words, he knew that he was either going to be killed or that he was safe with God once he heard this music. So the, the music's experiential quality helped him get through uh, uh, and console him in a way that uh, 
is understood by Butters as metaphysically uh, meaningful. So I think we're going to stop there and talk in the next video.